What's up everybody, this is Danny. There is so much awesome tech at CES this year, so it's impossible for me to show you everything, but I wanna show you five things that really impressed me at this year's show. And the first one is Razer's Project Linda. Now you guys know that I'm a Razer phone user, so I was excited to see this. It's basically a prototype blade stealth shell which uses Razer's phone to power this thing. And the speakers are so good on the Razer phone, they decided to use the phone's audio, which I can't hate on. It docks into this cutout with an awesome mechanical USB-C connection. And the next thing you know, you have a full-on Android laptop experience. There is a built-in battery to charge the Razer phone over three times, USB-C port on both sides, one for peripherals and the other side for power pass-through. And of course, that full RGB keyboard is here to give it that Razer touch. And I was really surprised just how well this thing worked for being a prototype. Scrolling worked really well using the phone's display as the trackpad. It felt good. And I hope this thing does come to market, but we will see since we aren't sure if the Razer phone will stick to this form factor that long to even see this happen. This is just a concept, and this concept isn't new, but it's one of the best executions that I've seen, and this means that the future of the Razer phone looks pretty bright within the company's pipeline. The second thing that blew me away was over at the Sennheiser booth. These are the new HD 820s. I'm a proud owner of the HD 800S, which are open back, and to see these unique curved Gorilla Glass closed back headphones displayed, I was immediately intrigued. The build quality is what you would expect. It's the same connection and cable. Some metal mixed into a lightweight plastic form factor. They were extremely comfortable as usual, but the soundscape is very unique because they are closed back, but they sound like a monster hybrid of both of them. You get the same spatial effect as open back, but a little bit more direct sound like closed back. So I fell in love with them. You will be mine this summer. Much respect to Sennheiser on the HD 820s. Over at the LG booth, they had a canyon where you could walk through a hall of curved OLED displays. Tons of people there checking it out. It was a sight to see for sure. You really had to be there to appreciate it. So I wonder what the cost of that was. But anyways, they had cool new OLEDs, which I will cover in my best TVs of 2018 video, which I will link down below. But I really like their new laser 4K projector. It had a standing design, which is nice because it makes it more flexible. You can put it anywhere in your home or technically take it outdoors if you want it. It has 2,500 lumens of brightness, WebOS TV software built in, which I'm a huge fan of. And it supports HDR, which is awesome. And it looks like it will come in under $3,000, which is very reasonable with these type of specs. Also, LG had my next monitor on display. This is the 34 inch 5K ultra wide 21 by nine display. I'm a Mac user, so I can't wait to get this. My complaint about the 5K ultra fine displays were the bulky base, which they changed here to this beautiful slim and curved one and the crazy large bezels that were on the ultra fine 5K, but they did not include this in this new one. Very thin bezels, so I really love the way this looks. The specs look great also, 98% of DCI-P3 color space, 600 nits of peak brightness, which is really great. It doesn't have just Thunderbolt 3, but also has HDMI port, so you can use it with PCs as well, which is nice. They had updated 4K monitors here too, which look amazing for dual monitor setups because these displays even have thinner bezels. They really looked incredible. Colors and brightness were on point. So these could be great for people that don't need that 5K resolution with the same type of specs. The coolest TV by far was the wall by Samsung. This is a 146 inch 8K micro LED TV. Everyone was crowding around to see what the hype was about. What makes this special is that this is a modular system, so since this TV is built out of individual micro LED panels, you could essentially buy the size that you actually need and then expand it later if you want to. Also, this makes commercial applications possible, so let's say that you wanted a weird aspect ratio to put a fireplace on a wall in a restaurant, you could buy that specific size. There's a lot of unanswered questions here, like if you can add the panels yourself or you have to send it in, but the 2000 nits of peak brightness, 8K and HDR looked absolutely incredible, all built in with this 8K upscaling tech that they talked about. So this year is gonna be an awesome year for TVs. Last but not least is the Panasonic GH5S. I got a little hands-on time with this. The body looks identical besides some red accents, 
The big key here is the new lower resolution sensor that is much better in low light. We did a little bit of testing here, pushing it over 10,000 ISO on this micro four thirds sensor, and it seemed really clean, so I can't wait to get this to try it. They did remove in-body stabilization, which sucks, but let's see if that really matters for the application Panasonic intended this to be used as. Stay tuned for more, for I'll be getting this in-house very soon, and I'll be doing some more coverage. So that's about it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know which products that you like best. I missed a few key things like the Vivo phone with Synaptic's built-in display fingerprint scanner because honestly I couldn't find it. But hit that like button if you enjoyed this. Subscribe for more videos on these products when they drop and I'll see you guys in the next one.